Hi everyone, this is Natalie. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. In this video tutorial, I will be showing my stitching process for this cute sampler page. I created this entire page for practicing French knots. And I decided to make this page differently and painted this colorful background first using watercolor. I experimented with painting on fabric for the first time and I find it really satisfying. I think it turned out great and I will be using watercolor in my future projects. Then, after fabric is dry, I transferred all the rest details using my favorite method. It's a light pad and heating erasable gel pens. You can also use a ruler to make straight lines, I find it really comfortable. And then I place it my fabric in the hoop and pull it tight, cause we don't need any wrinkles, right? I stitched all the letters using black floss, like I did in my previous video tutorial for lettering. You can find all the links for my previous video tutorials in the video description below. I did simple outline stitches for decorating the page frame. It's just the back stitch and whippet back stitch. You can use another stitches if you want, it's up to you. I like to make different borders for my sample pages. They look so fun and it's so meditative for stitching them. There is a link for outline stitches video tutorial in description too. Now let's start stitching this block for French knots. This will become a great reference for you. You can compare how different French knots can look depending on how many strands and wraps you can use. I'll start from 3 strands column, making a French knot with 1 wrap and then 2 and then 3 wraps. To make a French knot, bring your needle up through the fabric where you want to place a knot. Hold the thread using your non-stitching hand, wrap the thread around the needle once for a small knot or more for a larger knot. To finish the knot, insert the needle back into the fabric close to the hole you came out, but not in the same hole. Then slowly pull the needle and working thread through the rapid loops to complete a French knot. And you got a nice French knot! See, it's super easy, just get more practicing and you become a pro after stitching my sample page. Now let's make French knots using four strands. I noticed that one wrap looks like two wraps from three strands column. Two wraps look similar to the three wraps from the previous column. Isn't it interesting? This pattern I can relate to all sizes of French knots by diagonal from bottom left to the top right. Did you know it? Leave a comment below if you find it interesting and let me know your thoughts. Let's make French knots for one and two strands. I like making French knots, it's one of my favorite stitches. For me they are simple to do, but for you can be a little bit tricky. And I know that many people even hate French knots and are waiting to do them. That's why I created another very detailed video tutorial for French knots, where I'm showing lots of tips and tricks how to make them properly and which mistakes people often do. In this video tutorial, I'm walking you through all the steps such like choosing the right needles and fabric, you will learn 
how to make perfect French notes and avoid top 6 common mistakes. I replicated all of them and showing what went wrong and how to fix it. If you watched this video tutorial, please let me know and leave a comment in which mistakes you recognize yourself and which tips helped you to make your French notes look better. I'm really curious because I know that it can be very frustrating if you are trying to make French notes without knowing the technique. Trust me, it's a lot easier as you think and it's worth spending some time to learn how to do them properly. Now let's go back to the sampler page. Did you know that you can use French notes as a filling stitch? Yes, you can! I'm using three strands of white color and will be filling all the clouds. I'm wrapping my needle once for the edges and twice in the middle to create different textures and volume effects. Phew, that was a lot of French knots. I'm going to rest from them and stitch the sun using those variated threads. I'm going to use chain stitch 3 strands. To make a chain stitch, make a loop, take your needle up in the distance away, go through this loop and pull the thread. As you can see, I'm keeping the thread using my left hand to control the loop. I will be showing this stitch in details in my next video tutorial. There is going to be an entire sampler page for this. If you enjoy watching my video tutorial and my tips and tricks were helpful for you, please make sure to give it a like and comment and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Don't forget to hit the bell so you will not miss my next video tutorials. And here I decided to experiment with brush pens. I figured out they can bring you some bright colors, but also they spread over the fabric a little bit. So this is what I got. Looks nice for the sun, but can be a problem in other places. Just be careful. You can fill the stem for those trees using stem stitch like I did. I use it two strands of floss or it can be sudden stitch or split stitch. French knots can be also used to create borders. They give an interesting texture and volume. Just make your French knots really close to each other. Be precise in putting your needle right into borderline. I used three strands of floss and I really like how it turned out. I fill it all the rest using the same thread and working seed stitch. Seed stitch is just random short stitches in different directions, made close to each other. I never used it before, but this time I decided to try. I have no regrets. Seed stitches look perfect here and it's simple to do. You should like it too. And this is one more successful experiment. This time it's about mixing two similar thread colors. 
I use the combination of two thread colors, two strands from light green and two strands from darker green. And look how cute it is! I think it gives an illusion that bushes have lights and shadows on their leaves. And it gives a natural look now. How do you think? Uh, would you try it? You can use French knots to make teeny flowers like this, one yellow knot in the center and six pink knots around it. I use it two strands. Remember that the size of the flowers depends on the amount of strands you use. For the grass I use two strands. It's a combination of the same green colors I use it for bushes, just less strands. And here we go, it's my favorite part with the sheep. I imagine that their sheep owner is a creative person and he cuts her sheep leaving cute hairs and their butts. I stitched hairs using satin stitch and three strands of floss. Let's get into the details and stitch the sheep face. First I stitched it using satin stitch. I started filling from the stitch in the center and then move it to the right and to the left. This way I can keep the stitches direction better. Then I added eyes using French knots, it's just the back stitches. Everything is simple, you just need to remember where those eyes and mouth are located because uh, all the marks left behind the satin stitch. I hope you will need it. For the sheep ears I use it long and short stitch, but if this stitch is new and complicated for you, just fill them with stem stitch, the same way like I did for the trees. And here I decided to add some floral crowns for my sheep. Look at them, they are so cute! I like it to mix different colors and now I use one blue strand and two light lavender strands. I will be stitching those wildflowers, it's three strands of 
of floss total and I'm making French knots and wrapping one time. For the stamps I use back stitch and one strand. I made teeny leaves using lazy daisy stitch and three strands. To make a lazy daisy stitch, pull the needle through to the front, make a loop and insert again right next to the place you pull out. I usually do it right in the same place. Come out again in the other place holding the thread using your non-working hand. Go through the loop and insert the needle outside the loop and move on to the next pedal. I made an entire sampler page for practicing lazy daisy stitch and my next video tutorial is going to be all about lazy daisies and example of using. So if you don't want to miss it, just subscribe to my channel and hit the bell. And YouTube will notify you when I will upload my next video tutorial. You can get this sampler and many other samples like this if you join my teaching club on Patreon. It's a perfect place if you are a beginner and don't know where to start. Definitely check out my Patreon page to see all the benefits you can get. That's it, thank you so much for watching and see you next time, bye!